Larry Eiler was a serial killer with Wabash Valley Ties. The ISU student confessed to killing 22 young men between 1982 and 1984. Last night, we showed you the faces of two boys still unidentified. Two of Eiler's victims picked up from Terre Haute, their bodies dumped in Newton County, Indiana. 33 years later, never claimed by their families. Tonight, the story of another Eiler victim through the eyes of a mother who still searches for justice. Seventy-seven year old Barbara Agan of Terre Haute has lived through more tragedy than most can imagine. Barbara has buried all three of her children at this Terre Haute cemetery. The family's firstborn, Stephen Agan, was taken from them at the young age of 23, murdered by a serial killer named Larry Eiler. I think Steve just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. I think he knew him just well enough to say, hey, do you want to ride? Barbara says Stephen was jogging home from the bowling alley on a warm December Sunday. Larry Eiler worked just a few blocks from the Agins family car wash in Terre Haute. On December 18, 1982, Larry offered Stephen a ride, but never took him home. After a day or so, I knew that there was really something wrong. Stephen's body was found in a wooded area near Highway 63, not far from Newport, Indiana, in Vermilion County. He had been handcuffed, blindfolded, and gagged, his abdomen and chest sliced open, and horizontal gashes to his throat and gut. I went back to the funeral home and I wanted to see him, but they wouldn't let me see him because it, we, he was in too bad a shape. Yeah, he said it was worse than any car wreck victim that they'd ever had because they actually just split him open. It has been nearly 34 years since the Agins laid their son to rest. Barbara is quick to tell you Stephen was fun-loving, kind, and very family-oriented. She's also quick to admit she does not hate anyone for her loss. For the sake of my own sanity, I, I do forgive him. And at the same time, you know, Larry Eiler had a mother that was grieving and she was losing a son too. Eiler confessed to Agin's brutal murder in an attempt to avoid the death penalty. He admitted to 21 other killings in these written confessions released after his death in prison, giving closure to families desperately needing answers. But there are still two victims without a name, two victims without a home. And then here's a young boy that was the hitchhiker. We showed Barbara Agin the boy's pictures. This mother can't imagine families not searching for their loved one. Somebody knows that somebody is missing. And like I say, they loved them when they were born. And I don't know why they don't love them now and bring them home. Through all the tragedy and heartache, Barbara Agin was able to bring her son home. She says it brings closure knowing they found him, knowing he's buried by other loved ones, knowing where he is. And through her loss, this extremely strong woman can perhaps teach us all a lesson. I, I guess the good Lord just gives you strength and you just go through it. She is an amazing woman. If you know anything about these boys, these two unidentified boys, there is important information, contact information for you on our website, WTHITV.com.